Hi, this video is part two of our Excel and Dispatcher integration. Part one showed you how to export data from the Dispatcher into Excel, and part two will show you how to import the data back in after it's been edited. So a couple of things you need to know of the, about the import from Excel into Dispatcher. The import process will only update or add fields. It will not delete. So if you delete any data in this Excel sheet that's already there, it will not affect the actual import. I will show you a couple of scenarios. So first thing what we want to do is we want to upgrade uh, Robert Boykins from a laborer to foreman. So all we have to do is change his type to foreman. And Excel will autocomplete since a foreman already exists in the, the same column. It will make it easier for you to type. The next thing, as you'll notice, is Adams M has been added. So if you look in the left hand side, this is our current employee list and Mark Adams is currently not in here. So this is a complete new row that I've added that you can simply do in Excel. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to delete this employee from our database. So again, it doesn't actually delete it from the dispatcher database. I'm just export, uh, removing it from the import to show you that by deleting certain fields in Excel doesn't actually modify our employee import at all. So after the import is done, uh, Graham Gamble, Campbell should still be in the employee list. So I've modified what I had to do and I'm going to hit save. Now we can close Excel. I'm going to go ahead and close the employee list. To import data back in, we'll need to go to file and go to import Excel. So first thing we have to do is we have to browse out to the file we just modified. I've saved it to my desktop so it's easier to access. And this is very important. The first row holds column titles. So basically what this means is that the very first row, row one, does not have any data that you'd like to import. It only says employee ID, employee name. That way you will not have an employee ID in dispatcher called employee ID or employee name called employee name. So basically all this means is it will ignore the actual first row that's in the Excel sheet. To verify that we have the right sheet, we can click display first row. And here you see what, what's uh, in the actual first row. So employee ID, name and type. On the right hand side, we select our employee database. And again, anything with the asterisk, that's a required field. So if you have anything that's not fully filled out, it will not be able to import it in. Now we just have to match up our fields with what's already in Excel. So employee ID is Excel column A, as you can see on the left hand side. Employee name is column B. Employee type is column C, and so forth. So after you've confirmed this is correct, just click import. And then it will ask you, so the database we're already trying to import already has the individual employees. And it's asking us, do we want to override just this employee, which is Adams K? Do we want to override all? Do we want to skip or skip all? A good practice before you get to this step is to make a make sure you have a good backup of your dispatcher database. I know everything I've entered is correct, so I'm going to click override all. The import is complete. And now we can just verify our employee database. So by going to set up and employees, I should be able to see Mark Adams in here. And I will see that uh, Graham Gam Campbell has not been deleted from the list. And I can see that Robert Boykins is not a foreman and not a laborer. And this is how you do a proper import from Excel into the dispatcher.